Hi, it's Texas. Thanks for watching CBS 19 plus. A lot of things happening this weekend in East Texas. Perhaps the biggest event is the annular eclipse. An annual eclipse. How is that happening? Well, on Saturday, the moon as it orbits the Earth will be at its farthest point from the Earth during its orbit about 251,000 miles away, but it will be in perfect alignment with the sun. And as a result, it will cast a shadow on the sun and we'll be able to see that with a pair of eclipse viewing glasses. Don't try to look at this without any type of special eyewear. You could do some damage to your eyes, but if you've got the eyewear, this is what it should look like. Partial eclipse begins at 1025 at 1155. We will have 80% coverage. This will be different than April when we'll have 100% coverage, but we'll have 80% coverage here in East Texas. Corpus Christi, San Angelo, the Hill Country, they could have 100% coverage, but here 80% coverage. The partial eclipse ends at 132 and then that sun will be shining brightly once again. It looks like Saturday we will have great viewing conditions. The sky should be clear for this event. Again, please have some special viewing glasses. Then on April 8th, the solar eclipse path of totality comes right over Tyler. Now we're going to be in totality for about two and a half minutes between Tyler and Dallas getting closer to the red line. That's when there could be 100% totality for more than four minutes. So that'll be over toward Terrell, just to the east of Dallas, up toward Emory, over toward Broken Bow, Oklahoma. We will have thousands of visitors into East Texas to see this event, and it will be hopefully clear in April. All right, tonight we are talking about bird migration forecast. On Friday, we had 667 million birds of flight. Friday night, Saturday night, and even Sunday night. Little lower tonight, especially over parts of Texas, we'll consider this medium bird migration. So 329 million birds predicted to be flying across the flyway. Of course, they're coming from the north down to the south, then heading into some of the lakes around southwest Missouri, Beaver Lake into northern Arkansas. Maybe they're landing there tonight, then making the rest of their progress down into Mexico or along the Gulf Shores or down into Florida or South Texas. So a busy week for bird migration. Looks like they'll have some great weather to be flying in, except for Wednesday, Thursday with some storms in the uh, upper Missouri River Valley and Mississippi River Valley. Meantime, back here in Tyler since September 1st, and we always speak of September 1st as the beginning of the meteorological fall season. With that in mind, we've had almost five inches of rainfall since September 1st, and we are about an inch ahead in our gauge. We cut into our 2023 deficit quite a bit last week, but we're still six inches below average. Longview's a little bit below average since September 1st, but Lufkin's had more than 10 inches of rainfall since September 1st. Something that you'll note about parts of deep east Texas when we go into what we have uh, El Nino patterns or El Nino pattern that is developing. In fact, right now we have an El Nino advisory that's in effect, so El Nino should last through spring of next year. Uh, when we have these types of conditions present, deep east Texas, including the city of Lufkin, tend to have well above average rainfall. All right, the above average rainfall of late has eliminated most of our burn bans in East Texas. Franklin County is still in the burn ban, San Angelo and Sabine County, and that is it. Uh, we will be dry this week. There is a small chance of rain over deep East Texas. Next best chance of rain still looks like it'll be about 10 days away. Over the next seven days, you've got very light amount, maybe a hundredth of an inch, maybe a tenth of an inch, parts of Angelina County, uh, San Augustine and Sabine County, and most likely this would occur Wednesday or Thursday. But again, uh, subsequent computer model data coming out even Monday morning took that a little bit farther to the south. So I think it'll remain fairly dry. Big storm system up over the Great Lakes. We have a warm westerly flow aloft, so our temperatures will be warming this week. And that's a dry flow. And then a storm in the upper Midwest, upper Missouri River Valley, upper Mississippi River Valley. Storms are forecast across Iowa. Wisconsin, Illinois, Northern Missouri, 
parts of Nebraska and Kansas. Likely comes with a lot of wind, likely comes with some strong, if not severe thunderstorms. For us, we're going to turn breezy here by Friday. That front will drag a cold front in here, and we will have cool and dry weather for the weekend with high temperatures in the 70s back here in East Texas. So a little warming trend with more cloud cover by Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the 80s. The cold front comes through. Saturday is decidedly cooler. 72 Saturday, 72 Sunday, lower 70s Monday, Tuesday, upper 70s by Wednesday, Thursday. So you got six out of 10 days or even seven out of 10 days where the temperature will be below average. 10 day low temperature trend in Tyler. Couple of 40s showing up in our extended outlook past Saturday, 55 Saturday morning, 49 Sunday morning in the upper 40s to low 50s Monday and Tuesday back to the mid 50s by Thursday. So again, looks like six out of 10 days. Our temperatures are below average. How about rain chances? As we said, it's going to be a fairly dry week. Wednesday, 20% chance of rain around Tyler and Longview, maybe a 30% chance of rain over deep East Texas, but that is it. Here's future skycast at 11 o'clock Monday night. Rain moving into Corpus Christi up to Houston. We'll try to run a shower up to Anderson County, maybe a little a blip of a shower Wednesday closer to the Red River. Otherwise, you've got more rain moving through and near and south of Houston by Thursday. All right, morning lows Tuesday. It's going to be another comfortable start to a day. Temperatures in the upper 50s, 59 in Linden, 61 in Pittsburgh, 60 at Mount Pleasant. In our central counties, 59 in Gilmer, 65 in Tyler, 62 at Jacksonville, 62 also at Palestine and at Athens and over deep East Texas. A little cooler there. Look at Nacogdoches under a mostly cloudy sky. Temperature falls to 56. Crockett at 59, Groveton at 63. Hemp Hill down to 53, Jacksonville down to 62. Wind and wind gusts on Tuesday will have a south wind and winds will be sustained at about 7 to 10 miles an hour, gusting at times from 12 to 16 miles an hour out of the south, generally out of the south. That means Tuesday's high temperatures, 82 up in parts of Cass County, Bowie County up to 83. Looking out to our west around Canton up to 83, Jacksonville up to 84, Henderson up to 85. Tyler and Longview Gilmer also in the mid 80s. Carthage up to 84. Deep East Texas counties temperatures are going to be in the low to mid 80s. So Lufkin up to 82 under mostly cloudy skies. Crockett up to 83 and Hemp Hill up to 84. Here's your bill. It's got white Texas by Joint Hospital 10 day forecast. So yeah, 80s in the forecast here Tuesday. Morning clouds giving way to some afternoon sunshine Wednesday. A high of 80, 84 on Thursday, 83 Friday and then a cold front coming through. And the cold front comes through Friday afternoon, so the temperatures dropped to 55 Saturday morning, 72 Saturday afternoon, 72 Sunday afternoon, staying in the lower 70s despite sunny skies Monday and Tuesday. Thanks for watching CBS 19 Plus and have a great night.